What is up, fellow thermonuclear AFers? I am Dan Favalli coming at you with what is going to be the big, long-awaited What If Project for the Hardware Knox podcast. Very quickly, before I explain to you what it is and what you're going to watch in the forthcoming clip, please remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If this is your first time checking us out. Like and comment on our videos. Help the algorithm love us back. It means a lot. Your subscription is the most important thing. Hit that subscribe button. And again, it will genuinely mean the world. We move on to the Cleveland Cavaliers, though. Thinking about the sheer number of what-if moments for the Cleveland Cavaliers since LeBron James entered the league can get overwhelming. What if he never left the first time? What if he never came back? What if the Golden State Warriors never added Kevin Durant in 2016? How many titles would LeBron second go-round in Cleveland feature? Would Kyrie Irving never request a trade? Would LeBron never be incentivized to join the Los Angeles Lakers? My head hurts. Justin Rowan of the Chase Down podcast felt a similar way when I posed this exact question to him. Here's what he wrote. This is a ridiculously tough one, as there are so many what-ifs, right down to if the Cavs trade for LaMarcus Aldridge instead of Kevin Love in 2014. Do the Warriors get to execute their plan A and trade some combination of Harrison Barnes, Draymond Green, and Clay Thompson for Love? In the end, though, Rowan settles on the mega what-if that is the 2015 Finals when Kyrie suffered a fractured left kneecap after Love was already sidelined with a shoulder injury and the Cavs fell to the not-yet-dynastic Warriors. So many of the issues between Kyrie and LeBron blossomed from that moment, Rowan wrote, with LeBron questioning whether Kyrie was hurt throughout the playoffs and feeling like he'd play through it. A lot of the reporting, even at the time, suggested that when Kyrie went down, it created a significant fissure in the relationship. There's the immediate question of whether they would win in 2015 if Kyrie was healthy, but the long-term implications are fascinating as well. I agree with Rowan. This feels like the right call, though I still can't shake the KD element of everything. How many titles do the Cavs win if he doesn't go to Golden State? His 2016 free agency decision, made possible by an unprecedented salary cap spike, didn't directly involve the Cavs, but it sure as hell impacted them more than any other title contender at the time. 